Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about dark matter and the potential collisions of this matter with planet Earth. And more specifically, we're going to be investigating potential craters created on the planet Earth that could have been produced by the mysterious dark matter. All of which is based on the upcoming study that investigates one of the craters that has very unusual origins. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. In the last few months, several different papers and also several different pictures confirmed the existence of dark matter even further. The more recent analysis was actually focusing on the so-called lensing effects, and several papers were able to show that the only way to produce these lensing effects the way that we see them is if there's unusual chunks of matter somewhere out there in the universe. But because there are no actual chunks of matter visible in those pictures, the only explanation here is of course the mysterious dark matter. In other words, this unusual presence, unusual mass that seems to be all over the universe. But obviously, even today we have no idea what it is, what it's made out of, but there are quite a lot of theories investigating different potential detections and also origins of this mysterious matter. Some of these theories involve all kinds of exotic particles. But this particular theory that I wanted to take a look at today focuses on dark matter being made out of so-called strange matter also known as strange star matter. But to try to understand all of this, let's quickly take a look at what we are made out of. Here's a typical person. Inside this person, we'll find all sorts of different cells. Inside each of these cells, we'll find all sorts of different protons and neutrons and electrons. But inside each of these protons and neutrons, we'll also find what's known as quarks, which as of today is the smallest particle we've ever discovered. Here's a summary of different types of quarks and also so-called leptons we've discovered with pretty much most of the known matter to us consisting of this stuff right here in the left column. But you can obviously make particles out of other types of quarks, and in one of the future videos we're going to be discussing various types of exotic matter sciences have been able to create by combining different types of quarks and making these different types of, I guess you can call them atoms, that do not actually exist in nature at least today. They might have existed long, long time ago when the universe was much hotter and had very different density, but today we don't really think it's possible for these particles to naturally be created. Except, of course, if they're inside a neutron star. And so at least one theory of dark matter presents the dark matter as a kind of a strange matter, consisting of equal parts of up-down quarks and also strange quarks. So essentially, instead of having something like this with two up and one down quark, these types of particles would contain a mixture of up-down and also strange and charm quarks. These so-called strangelets could even grow in size by combining with regular matter, as you see in this illustration, and could hypothetically become very large and very massive. But they can also interact with regular matter through various types of magnetic interactions and potentially even lead to relatively large explosions. Although, to be honest, a lot of scientists are still not entirely sure that the strange matter as it's known, or the strangelets, can actually exist at all. But if they could exist, and if they did interact with matter on Earth, we could potentially discover their effects here by looking at different types of craters. Which also brings me to a video that was made last year, where I did discuss the idea of, well, could dark matter have killed someone, and can it actually be dangerous? And it seems like the scientists behind this paper do make a suggestion that if strange matter is dark matter, then it could be dangerous. And they even present several examples where at least one fatality might have been caused by this unusual matter. So let's discuss this. According to the scientists behind this paper, every year there's at least one report of an unusual crater being created somewhere on the planet that was not produced by a meteorite and that was not a naturally produced explosion of any kind. This right here is one such example from Nicaragua. In 2015 there was a report from ABC News right here that suggested an explosion on the beach that was not produced by any known chemical reaction. But most interestingly, in 2016, there was a fatality reported in India that did produce a crater and even injured three other people, but there was no report of anything being recovered, there was no chemical reaction that could have caused this, and this explosion seems to have occurred when something from space did collide with planet Earth, but nothing physical was reported to be found. 
and to try to figure out if this could have been caused by some kind of strange matter, the scientists behind this paper combined their simulations and their actual theory, including the simulations of what would happen if this unusual strange matter collided with matter on Earth, with the actual physical excavation and analysis of different types of rocks inside one such crater that was created in Ireland in 1985. And the crater itself was produced in 1985 and witnessed by several people walking their dogs. There was no meteorite recovered, there was nothing actually even falling to the ground, but interestingly the explosion itself created the effects that were observed very deep in the ground. In other words, the rocks and even the material underneath the rocks was affected by whatever caused this explosion. But unlike a meteorite collision, first of all, nothing was seen fall into the ground, no fragments of any kind were recovered, there was no chemical reaction involved, no residue of any explosives, and most importantly, they could not see any damage attributed to pressure of something hitting the ground from top at very high velocities. As if something just exploded but did not produce enough pressure to crush the rocks underneath. And interestingly, even the granite rocks recovered from approximately 5 meters in depth or 15 feet in depth were shattered into little pieces. And to scientists behind this paper, this suggested that whatever piece of matter hit the planet that day was extremely dense and had extremely high nuclear matter density. Somewhat similar to what a lot of the predictions of the so-called strange matter indicate. Similar to the so-called quark matter or strange matter. But this was probably a very, very tiny piece, only about 10 kilograms or about 20 pounds in mass, and this would make this object extremely, extremely tiny. And though theoretically it could also obviously be a piece of, for example, neutronium matter or neutron star matter, or even a tiny, tiny black hole, when it comes to black holes, we know that small black holes like this would have actually disappeared a long time ago. Their actual lifespan would only be about 150 years. And neutron star matter would not really be stable enough to travel by itself unless it's inside a neutron star. And so according to the scientists behind this paper, the only thing that could have collided with planet Earth was probably some sort of a strange matter, which they also believe is the only thing that could potentially produce all of the effects observed in this crater. And this of course presents a somewhat interesting but also somewhat scary scenario, because every year there's a report of a non-meteorite crater and at least one such crater in India resulted in someone's death. So if all of these events are connected and if the scientists behind this paper are onto something, then it means that we need to start taking dark matter a little bit more seriously and start investigating if it actually does pose threat to humans here on Earth. But it's very important to understand that this is just a hypothesis for now. There is really not enough proof to suggest if this is actually what happened there. There is also no proof to suggest that this is what happened in India. So a lot more investigations and a lot more analysis is needed before we can definitively say that at least once a year, chunks of dark matter do fall on the planet and create explosions large enough to potentially hurt people. On the more positive side, of course, this also creates an opportunity for us to potentially recover some of this matter one day and maybe even use it for some sort of an energy production. In other words, there is a possibility, if this is of course true, that this type of matter could create a new way for us to produce energy that could even allow us to travel across the entire universe and maybe even create technology that we can't even think of right now. But unfortunately for now, that's all I wanted to talk about. Once there is more confirmations or disapproval of this idea, or once more papers come out discussing other non-meteorite craters and have other explanations for them, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. But until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot, and alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.